It is? Yeah. yeah, it takes a while. All right, excited to, uh, for Saturday night kickoff here in the swamp against Idaho. It's been a long time coming as far as our preparation through the off-season program uh, into spring ball and, uh, and now into to the, to the summer practice and training camp. But uh, Paul Petrino is an outstanding offensive football coach. Everywhere he's been, he's been successful. Uh, Welcome him back, Bam Hardeman from uh, Jacksonville. Uh, coaches a defensive line for Idaho. Uh, the team captain and played here from 98 to 2002. Uh, but first game, there's a lot of newness as far as new offense. Uh, excited to get our guys in front of our crowd in our stadium uh, and, and see the work that they've put in and see the, the fruits they've been, what they've, what they've done in our coaching staff and players alike. Uh, probably going to play up to nine true freshmen in this game. Uh, there'll be about eight or nine redshirt freshmen playing this game. So close to 20 guys will have their first experience of playing uh, at, in the swamp. So that'll be a lot of fun. But I'm very pleased with our effort, our preparation, how these guys have worked through the all season, uh, in the spring ball, in, through training camp. We had a very good practice last night and uh, looking forward to another practice this afternoon. As far as injury report, Marcus May is the only person that would be questionable for this game at this time. He will not practice today. Hope to get him back tomorrow. We will re release a depth chart after the press conference is over, which you'll be able to see. I think the only thing of notice there, uh, the backup quarterback will be Treon Harris going into this game. Uh, there was really no separation uh, from, from the backup standpoint. We met through the weekend and, and talked moving forward. Uh, felt like that Treon uh, had some things he could you know, provide for us offensively. Uh, but that's nothing that's been made for the long term. There's no one been redshirted. No decisions have been made uh, with Will Greer, or Schuyler Morningwig, anyone else. All of those guys did some good things, uh, and, and we're going to move forward week to week on that situation there. But I think you're going to notice a lot of depth at the running back position and, and receiver position. I feel pretty good about our situation at tight end, especially with the addition of Jake McGee. Clay Burton's had a good camp offensive line-wise. You know, right now, D.J. Humphreys would be our starter at left tackle. Uh, David Sharp's going to play in the game. He came back off his ankle last night. Was still a little gimpy, but moved around pretty well. A combination inside of Max Garcia at center, uh, Tyler Moore, Trip, uh, Trenton Brown, and Trip Thurman inside. Uh, Antonio Riles continues to come on. Been very pleased with some of his progress. Chaz Green, Rod Johnson, uh, all of those guys, are, you know, certainly we feel like and we can go play winning football. Defensively, uh, front seven, pre pre pretty solid with where we are on the defensive line. The four linebackers I've talked pretty extensively about through camp, along with Daniel McMillan and Alex Angelone, have done some nice things. Secondary, Vernon Hargraves, Brian Poole, Jabari Gorman, and Keanu Neal will start in some form or fashion. If we're in nickel, uh, we could have different combinations of Brian Poole playing the nickel, Vernon Hargraves, Jabari, or Nick Washington. Uh, if we're in regular, those four would probably be the starting four right there with Jabari and Keanu at safety and uh, uh, Brian outside with Vernon. Uh, the, the, obviously, we're going to play three true freshman uh, corners and Jalen Tabor, J.C. Jackson, and Quincy Wilson. All of those guys will play on special teams in the game, and depending on how they continue to progress, progress through the rest of the week, uh, how much corner they're going to play. Nick Washington, Duke Dawson, and Marcel Hells will all play special teams during the game, and how they continue to progress through the week uh, will determine how much they'll play at safety and, and possibly Nick at the nickel position. So uh, we haven't really decided yet on as far as Austin or Frankie who will kick. We've got confidence in both guys. Both guys had really strong camps, uh, but uh, we, we, we can win with both guys. I do know that. We haven't made a decision on the punter yet as far as Kyle and Johnny. We'll punt through the week and see where we, we go there. Kickoff return, we'll start with Andre. Uh, back there, he needs one more, I think, touchdown to set an SEC record. Uh, uh, as far as the off returner, would probably be Val uh, Valdez Showers or Brandon Powell. And then punt returner would probably start the game with Andre. DeMarcus could do it or Vernon Hargrave. So uh, we, we feel pretty pretty good hands as far as those things are concerned. Lito Shepard will be the uh, Mr. Two Bits for the game, so good to get Lito back in the swamp. Uh, but, but as I said earlier, we'll be playing about nine freshmen, about eight. Uh, red shirt freshmen. We do have some guys on the bubble. Kerry Clark, Taven Bryan, uh, DeAndre Goolsby, Will Greer, are all guys that are on the bubble as far as playing or not. And those decisions will be made as, as the week continues to progress uh, in moving forward. And I open it up for any questions. Will, what are you 
did Harris do to get to this point so early? I know he played in a similar offense in high school. Did that have anything to do with it? or? I think so. I think, you know, I think that, uh, you know, Will and Treon are both very talented players. And, uh, you know, there were some things that, uh, that we felt like he could, you know, provide for us offensively, maybe in some short yardage situations, some red zone. And he's done a nice job with some command things. There wasn't really enough separation, uh, you know, as far as that position was concerned. But he deserved the opportunity. We're going to give him that opportunity. Was he playing in the second quarter? Or the well, we, we'd like to, you know, given the situation, we'd like to, we'd like to play him. Then I think, you know, Robbie, a lot of that will be determined game day and the situation of the game and those sort of things. But we'd like to. Well, you've been around a lot of teams getting ready to start opening day. I mean, can you judge the level of excitement with this team in terms of their the players, just the whole building, maybe more than, than normal? Well, I think so. You know, anytime you go through a you know, you know, tough time in your life, you, you, you reflect and you, you, know, you get humbled and you – work hard and you pull together and you understand the people around you are close to you and uh, certainly in the building number one uh, but within that locker room number two and, and I've seen a very close-knit unit uh, you know in that locker room a lot of guys that uh, you know they, they know how to practice they know how to practice the right way they know how to compete and get after each other but also take care of each other uh, you know it's been a, a, a really a, a lot of fun in, in training camp I really enjoyed being around the guys, you could see the camaraderie and the togetherness in this football team. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing them go compete in front of our fans. Andrew in the middle. Did, did you say Will Gertz on the bubble as far as playing maybe? Is that Possibly, what you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, do you want to redshirt one of those guys? We haven't made any decisions on that. You know, I'd like to in a perfect world, but at the end of the day, it's a long season. And uh, again, there, there was not enough separation right now for us to, to, to make a definite decision on anything at this point. And from the offense, uh, you know, what, what's the biggest difference, I guess, going into this season with, with what this offense you kind of envision? Well, we're more able talented. To do? We're more talented. I mean, that, that's number one. I mean, you know, we could line up and run the run and shoot for all I care. We're more talented. I mean, we're, we're, we're more talented at running back than we've been, we're more talented at receiver. We're more talented at tight end. We're better up front, and we're better at the quarterback position. So it starts with talent, and probably one through eight are talent, and then I like what we're doing schematically. Jeff, yeah, someone on the right. Well, you talked about the confidence that this offense has. How much of that comes from – Kurt Roper, his presence, or or how much maybe you could compare it to also the, the new scheme, the new plays. That he's well, I think brought. that you know players are a reflection of their coach, and uh, Kurt is a very upbeat, positive guy. It's got a little edge about him, and I think that you've seen a certain carryover in our football, t our offensive football team. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, so. I think it's been a very positive addition as well as the confidence of a Mike Summers, of, of, of a you know, seasoned veteran that our guys have really, you know, I think, bought into and understood some of the things technique-wise he's teaching. Uh, but, again, it starts with talent, and I think we've got, we're more talented than we've been. Um, but, but Kurt's got an edge about him that I really like. Will, uh, just watching a couple practices with Harris, it looked like you like to get him in a little bit of a wildcat. Is that the thing that kind of allows him to be the backup? And well, again, he he presents some things that may take some hits off Jeff. You know, uh, it's a long season, and that's something that certainly that uh, Treon's done before. But he's also a very accomplished passer, and, and we got a lot of confidence in him as far as you know continuing to do a lot of the similar things we're going to do with Jeff, as well as Will could do and Schuyler as well. We, we talked a lot last year about this team, the woe is me mentality and the confidence, you know, drained, I guess. Uh, how much do they need to play and maybe need a win Saturday to kind of get, would that get that all back? I don't think so. I think, you know, you're going to have to face some adversity, you know, you know, whether it's Saturday night or wherever, and whenever it is, you got to be able to play through those situations and coach through those situations, and that's, that's part of it. That's what good teams do. And, that's what this team, I think, will embrace the adversity when it occurs and, and be able to handle it much better than we have before. And are you going to be different in terms of the rumors out of this building have been that you would sh shut things down in the fourth quarter when in a close game, knowing your defense could carry you through? Are you going to be different this year in terms of that, knowing that it needs to look different? 
Are you with me? What needs to look different? Well, I, I mean, maybe when, the when maybe you the, win. Well, it, maybe what, it's what needs to look different. Yes, but offensively, things need to look different. Well, we need to score points. Okay. So that that that'll be a welcome difference. <laughs> Okay, what about, though, you, do, you, do you anticipate backing off on being in the headset? I anticipate headset? doing what we need to do to win the game, and that's how I approach every game. Uh, back in the middle, all the back. Obviously, a lot of guys can play running back. Did anybody step forward in this last little bit of camp, and what do you see the split being on Saturday? Well, we'll see how Saturday goes, but certainly, you know, Kelvin Taylor and, and, uh, and Matt Jones have done some nice things. Matt's been a guy that's played well for us through his career. And, uh, and Brandon Powell's a different back than all of those guys because of what he can present in the passing game. He's very good in protection. He gives us certainly a, a different change up for what, uh, uh, for, for what the other guys do very well. And the other guys are good players. So we're, we're excited. They're just a different uh, talent skill set as opposed to what those other guys bring us. Will, could you talk a little about Idaho, you know, what you see in them, if there's anything unique about them on either side of the ball? Well, I think, you know, you know, offense, I mean, defensively, they're more of a four-down quarters team. They, they do jump in some odd, and uh, Ron's done a nice job everywhere he's been mixing up pressure and what they do. They did sign some junior college players after this past season, so there'll be some new faces on, that we will face. There'll be some new wrinkles, obviously, in any, any first game you're going to face. Uh, offensively, very similar to what Bobby's done before. Uh, you know, they're going to be very balanced in what they do in the run in the past game with Paul. Uh, they do a nice job of free releasing the backs in a lot of situations and getting five out. Got to make sure you're covered down on everyone. Uh, they create a lot of explosive plays because of that. If you don't cover down uh, in, in the, what we call scat protection, where they will get five people out on you quickly. So you just got to make, make sure you're matched up where you need to be. We're young in the secondary, so you got to make sure those guys are, have their eyes where they're supposed to be and cover down on, on the guys as far as the receivers are concerned. They've got some explosive players. I think they have nine players from the state of Florida. Uh, so we need, to, we need to go play well. Does the quality of, of, of opponent uh, allow you to play more freshmen, for instance? Uh, you guys are playing Idaho. It doesn't matter who we're playing Saturday. The, the, those nine would have played uh, going into the game. Those ones that are somewhat on the bubble would be on the bubble. Uh, so it doesn't matter. I mean, given our situation in the secondary, we're going to play some freshmen regardless. And uh, the other guys, in my opinion, David Sharp, Gerald Willis, Treon, uh, you know, C.J. Wharton are all very good players and deserve the opportunity, regardless of the opponent. So you would still plan to have your backup quarterback rep in the second quarter, no matter opponent? We'd like to, yeah. This will be the 27th straight season the Gators open against, at home against a non-ranked opponent. But lately we've seen a trend of SEC teams like LSU and Alabama play kind of in a neutral site against ranked opponents. Why, why are we seeing that trend now, and is that necessary with the college football playoff? Well, we are in 2017, I believe, going to, to uh, play in uh, Jerry World against Michigan. So, uh, I mean, I think it uh, – I don't know that it's changing because of the college football playoff. That just was settled recently. Uh, you know, we just received the SEC schedules within the last spring. So future scheduling has been very difficult for us moving forward until now. Uh, so – and I've been concentrating on this year, not past that. So – when it comes to postseason time, though, are you guys at a disadvantage opening no, up against No, our strength of schedule in the Southeastern Conference speaks for itself. Look at the top ten in the last three or four years. Uh, Nick, here. Coach, with the kicking battle, is that something where – that? The kicking battle? Mm -hmm. Is it something that is going to be active into the game or something you'll have figured out before game time? Well, we'd like to be able to get it done before game time, but I've got confidence in both guys, and both guys understand that. You know, and, and uh, Frankie's been very accurate from 30 in, um, and, and Austin passed that as a little stronger leg. Frankie was one for one in team competition during camp from 50 plus. So I think both guys are very capable. Well, obviously, when you sign two quarterbacks, there's always the potential for whoever doesn't win the job to, that one will leave. How do you think Will has handled this early on? I know in the recruiting process he said that he even kind of thought about redshirting this year. Yeah, you know, we haven't talked about redshirting anybody at this time. We've going into the first game. We plan on playing Treon, and could change in game two, could change in game three. It's a long season, and both of those guys understand that situation. I talked to Jeff Driscoll for a long time yesterday morning about helping these guys through a very tough time. That uh, from a standpoint of what he went through in his quarterback battles here at the University of Florida. 
and he's got a great reference point for the, for the, for, to talk to those guys about what he's been through. So no one's made any decisions about redshirting, okay? And we're going to continue to rep on the offensive field with Will Greer as well as Treon Harris at this time. And then with Treon, obviously he can do some of the things that Trey Burton did out of the Wildcat, but how much will it help just that he probably has more of ability to throw? Well, we're going to run our offense, and, and he runs and has good command of our offense and what we do. Uh, so whether it's from drop back passing to, to, uh, to, to running a quarterback run game, which Jeff will do as well, uh, or pocket movement situations, he's going to run our offense. Yeah, uh, Kurt Roper said earlier in camp that he wanted to play up to six receivers. I'm just curious about your thoughts on the depth at the receiver position and where does, you know, potentially a guy like LaTroy Pittman fit in the mix? Well, right now, you know, if we, we started the game tomorrow, so LaTroy would start in the slot, you know. So I've been feel very good about his progress along with Valdez Showers and C.J. Wharton's playing inside. Uh, we have you know, feel pretty comfortable with where we are there. We've got the ability to be able to put some other guys inside, but Quentin and uh, DeMarcus and – Ahmad and, and uh, Chris Thompson and uh, Andre DeBose have all been playing on the outside and I've uh, been very pleased with their progress. Alvin Bailey's another guy that's done some nice things. So I feel like we've got very good depth at the position. Just a quick follow-up. LaTroy, you know, as a guy who's been kind of up and down off the field, you know, during his career, what have you seen maturity-wise maybe in him? Uh, it really has matured and understood what it takes off the field to, to be successful on the field. And sometimes it takes guys, you know, um, some more time than others. Latour and I talked the other, the other day about it at length, about how far he's come and how proud I am of him and what he's accomplished. Um, it's, it's not add water instant player. I know you guys all think that, but sometimes it takes a little bit of time for a guy to really come into his own. And uh, I think he's done some really nice things as far as going across the middle and, and catching the ball, which you're going to have to do in the slot and winning in the slot. And uh, uh, he's been a very reliable guy for us so far in camp. Robert? Well, how much better is Driscoll now than from a year ago? Um, well, I think that we never really, as, as a fan base, got to enjoy the progress he made from year two to year three last year. Um, so... Uh, but I see much more command, uh, comfort level. Uh, we're also much better around him. You know, we're better up front. We're better at wide out. We're better at running back. We're better at tight end. So I think all of those components come together. He's a, he's a much, much better player because of, the, because of the people around him. But I also see a guy that's very driven, which he always was driven, uh, very competitive, which he was always competitive. But I don't think we ever got to see the improvements he made going into last year because of the limited time he had. Will DeMarcus was suspended at the end of last year. Is he completely done with that? Yeah, he's handled all of those situations so far. Coach, this will be your ninth game, ninth night game um, opener. Uh, is there, would you prefer having them, having the games at night or later in the day, given that it's so hot, you know, in August? Absolutely early in the season. You know, it's much better for, uh, you know, our fans and, and uh, it's much more comforting for them have the sun go down a little bit. We appreciate the Southeastern Conference helping us out on that. Uh, you know, Dr. Match and myself or Jeremy Foley have nothing to do with the schedule of the time of the day we play. That has to do with TV and our conference. So send your emails there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think from that, from that standpoint, it certainly helps our fans. And, you know, our guys are used to playing in the heat. They're used to uh, being out there in that. It's, we, we look at it as our advantage. And uh, so whether it's at 7 o'clock at night, it'll still be pretty hot out there for us. So it's no big deal when we play or where we play. Well, last year there was a tremendous amount of uh, excitement, uh, at least on the coaching staff part, about Matt Jones. Yeah. Can you talk about how, what's the feeling uh, for him heading into the season? Are people maybe uh, a little really more looked really good last <laughs> night. I'm still excited, you know. But uh, he's a very good player. Really smart. He has outstanding hands. He's very good in protection. Uh, he's up to 235 pounds. He looks really good carrying it. He looked outstanding last night. He looked very fresh last night uh, running the ball. Some of our defensive players commented uh, that they're happy on Saturday they'll be tackling somebody else. So he's a, he's a good football player. We're excited about getting him back in the swamp and playing again healthy. How about his state of mind after? Very good. You know, very frustrating for him early on. 
Uh, went through a, you know, a very tough fall, missing all of training camp, uh, coming back and trying to, to get back in the swing, um, and just uh, and then having the knee injury against LSU. So, uh, very frustrating fall for him. Uh, but a guy that uh, is, I know is excited watching him last night at practicing and, and seeing the tempo he practiced with and how he went about his business. Uh, a guy that's going to be excited about playing on Saturday, I can tell you that. All right, take care.
Testing. Mike, can you just talk about the uh, excitement level? I mean, you've been around for a lot of years, but the excitement level for this year, especially coming off what happened last year and, and the confidence you guys have? Um, you're definitely excited to come back and, and play again after the season we had last year and definitely excited to get get a victory because we haven't had a victory in a, in a while around here um, on the road or here. So we're definitely excited to, to get this thing started. I know the, the whole campus is excited. The coach is excited. Uh, players are definitely excited, so we're ready to go out and showcase our talents and abilities. Um, I would say because of the disappointment we had season we had last year, but I mean we still have to you know stay focused, you know know our task at hand because we we have to execute in the game. So we are excited, but it's controlled emotions. There was a loss of confidence last year. It's pretty clear on both sides of the ball. Do you guys have that back, or do you think it'll come back? you know, with a win or a couple of wins or whatever? Uh, I wouldn't say it was the confidence we lost. I say it just didn't show as well, you know. Um, so we're in the position now to 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 have the co same confidence that we've had in previous years and to be able to display it on the field on Saturday night. So I feel that is there. I feel the camaraderie is there, and I feel like there's no reason why we shouldn't be successful with what we want to do. Do you remember the last win for this team? Arkansas in like October or something, which is too long, so. Trayon was named the backup. What have you seen from him in camp that maybe maybe gave him that edge? Um, quick decision making ability, uh, the ability to get out of get out of pressure when when it breaks down, as him Driscoll and Will Greer have. Um, he just showed showed some early leadership signs, which is probably why Muschamp gave him the backup job. So, I mean, he has great elusive ability, and then can throw can throw in the pocket and on the run. And like I say, he makes quick decisions, which are very effective in his offense. You know, there's been so much focus on the offense and the preseason with a new coordinator. What are your thoughts about the potential of this defense with, with this group that you have, and how do you think maybe you can help them along the way? Uh, we, we, we're playing together as a defense more than, I've ever, more than I've ever probably witnessed since I've been here. Um, we played, we've been playing together. We've been, we, there's no point in fingers. There's no, you should have did this, you should have did that. We all came together for a common goal to be the best defense. And, um, you know, now it's time for us to display it and actually do that. So we've done the, we've done the things necessary to do it until now. So now we just got to go out and, just, and do it. <clears throat> How much do the guys on this team respect Jeff Driscoll, especially the way he handled his injury last year, walking off the field with a broken leg, things like that? Um, I, know, I know personally I have a lot of respect for Jeff, and I know that, that falls through a lot of the guys in the locker room. We all have respect for Jeff, especially him, you know, not being able to finish the season last year. A lot of us weren't able to finish the season last year. So, you know, that just that fact and knowing that we're coming back and he's coming back and he's coming back to lead the team, lead the offense, we have a lot of respect for him because, you know, a lot of our, a lot of our success will be in his hands. So. <clears throat> Mike, you open up against two teams that – have combined three wins last season. Are those good enough tests uh, for the Gators once you start SEC schedule? I mean, we had four wins last year, so you know that's that's just a detriment to the difference between a year. You know, um, they might have three wins combined. You know, but I mean, that's no, that's not Kate. That doesn't speak volumes about how their off season was, how they've been working in camp. You know, I'm pretty sure they were working hard as well, and they want to turn their season around just like we do. We do as well. So uh, we, we, can't, we can't take any opponent lightly, you know, especially coming in here, going on the road. We can't take any opponent lightly. We have to go and be ready to play regardless of their previous record. Mike, it sounds like it would be a, kind of a weight off of your shoulders to have a win this, this Saturday for the whole team to kind of celebrate in the locker room afterwards. Um, you just talk about how important it is for you guys maybe to uh, have that good feeling this Saturday after after that seven game losing streak. I mean, yeah, the the the, the seven game losing streak was definitely something tough to to bear and something tough to have to play through and witness. Um, 
but yeah, getting getting the win will will definitely help. Will definitely help the the whole the whole feeling around the stadium, you know, because um because because of what we had because of the season we had last year, and just just to know that all the, all the hard work we've been putting in on the off season and and how how we came together in camp, knowing that that'll pay off and 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 contribute to some wins, which I feel it I feel it will. So that that'll just be the biggest thing is just to know all the hard work and all the Every, all the sweat and all everything we put into it is paid off. So that would be the biggest thing, I feel. Pretty obvious that this team will have kind of a chip on its shoulder this year. Um, I'd say I'd say yeah, and I'd say that, you know, you're supposed to have a chip on your shoulder whether you put, no matter when you play the game, especially on defense. If you don't play with emotion on defense, then you just, you know, you're playing like a zombie. That, that won't really, you can't really be a successful defense doing that. Um, so I feel, yeah, we'll have a chip on our shoulder, but we'll know what we have to go out and do to win. So, Mike, what, what differences are you seeing in this year's offensive line? I, I know the, the scheme's different. They had to get in di better shape, maybe. You know, they're moving. You know, they're running more, having to be quicker. What, what, what just are you expecting from that unit? Um, I say they're they're a lot nastier. They're finishing blocks up front, um, and they're opening holes for the running back. Um, I don't know if it's because of the scheme they're running, but I know that they they brought a new intensity to how they block and how they've approached the game. And I've liked it because it's gotten us better on defense. Um, it's gotten us better up front. And I, I'd say we, we've gotten them better as well through what we've been doing to them and what they've been doing to us, you know, scheme-wise and stuff. With the way we have to adjust and what they have to adjust, it'll be that much easier in the game. And, and you know, the depth, experience depth isn't really there in that unit, but there might be forced to rely on some of the young players, uh, David Sharp, Rod Johnson. What do you what do you see from some of these young guys that haven't really played? I mean, they haven't played in games, but you know they've they've been in practice against us, and if they can hold their own against uh, against our players and against what we're doing in practice, I feel they can hold their own against anybody out on the field. Um, they have shown plenty of uh, plenty of. Um, Plenty of signs of of having the having the ability without the experience, so um, I feel they can do it. And, and if anybody goes down, we have more than enough capable guys on both sides of the ball. Hey, Jeff, can you just talk about, um, obviously for you, getting back on the field, but it's the excitement level for the, you and this whole team. I mean, you must be seeing it in the locker room as well. Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's a new season, new year. Um, everybody starts out the season undefeated. So, uh, I mean, I think it's a good chance for us to really, really start fresh and showcase all that we've done throughout the spring and summer. And uh, I think we've done some good things. We just got to carry those over to the games. And um, as far as the fans go, I've, I really have felt a lot of excitement in the air. Um, a lot of people have come up, say they're looking forward to the season and uh, things of that nature. So I think there's a lot of excitement around our program right now. Jeff, how big is it for you? The last time you played out there, you broke your lower leg. How big is that for you coming back? I mean, that's not really in my mind at all. Um, like I said, that's in the past, and I'm good to go now. Uh, not thinking about it, but um, just getting back out there with the guys is the thing that I'm looking forward to most. Um, seeing how young guys respond to to going out there in front of fans rather than do it, doing it on the practice field. And um, I mean, I just want to see how, uh, I mean, how, how we can go out and play together for the first time against an opponent. And Jeff, how have you improved as a quarterback over the last year and under Kurt Roper? Um, I think I understand, first of all, what we're doing really well um, schema schematically, um, where we want to go with the ball in certain situations, when we want to, when we want to do run checks. And uh, when, you, when you start to do that, you can focus on um, the defense as well. I really do have an understanding of how to, how to study film, um, how to look at an opponent and what to look for. So I just think uh, 
all the time that I've put in, it's, it's really starting to pay off, and um, the game's really slowed down a lot. You know, last week, uh, Will lauded your toughness for walking off the field. I know you're tired of talking about this injury. This hopefully will be the last week. But, but this, uh, you know, what I know you weren't trying to, like, win your teammates' respect doing that, but do you think that's the kind of thing that, you know, a leader, just that's part of just being a leader? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I was, like I've, I've said before, I wasn't trying to be a hero. I wasn't trying to have any kind of moment or anything like that. But um, I just I just felt at the time it was best for me to walk off the field. Um, I don't know if it shows toughness, shows shows leadership. But uh, at the end of the day, football is a tough sport, and you got to be able to to show off that toughness at times. And I mean, I'm just I'm just looking forward to this year, kind of not trying to think about that. Mm -hmm. do, do you? I mean, is that important, though, to win the admiration of your teammates as a quarterback? I mean, have you learned that playing that position over the years? Absolutely. Uh, they got to have trust in you. Um, you got to show off that you can, uh, you can be mentally tough and you can, you can get through at times and, and that they can lean on you and, and follow your lead. So that's kind of that's the biggest thing as a quarterback, to, to be able to show that um, you're always going to be a consistent person and they can follow what you're doing. And, and last thing, how, how does your upbringing, how did your upbringing whether it's being in a military family or anything like that, kind of rub off on you in that, in that way? I've always had uh, a lot of great people around me, starting with my parents. Um, they've always uh, distilled discipline and uh, respecting other people, and I guess toughness and, uh, and leadership has, has uh, come up along the way. But I just, I mean, I'd just like to give credit to my parents. They did a great job, uh, and uh, they were always there for me. What do you remember about competing for the backup quarterback job your freshman year? What what kind of goes into that mindset? Um, when 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 I came in, I came in during the spring, had a little little jump on on Jacoby at the time. But uh, when you're when you're a freshman, you can't worry about that. You got to worry about getting better yourself, and um, that's it's tough to do. Um, you start thinking about the future, which you shouldn't be doing as a freshman. But um, it's just human nature. I think. Uh, Young quarterbacks and young players in general have to worry about themselves and not, not the, the, depth, the depth chart as much. So, You're also listed as holder on the depth chart, potential for some trick plays there or something like that? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to class my, classify myself as a versatile player. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've, uh, I, mean, I've just, I've, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity to where it can give the, the field goal block team some issues and, and have to give them more things to think about during the week. But... Uh, Anything that I'm asked to do, I'm willing to do. What are some things that kind of go into playing that position? Was it more difficult than you thought? Just catch a ball, put it on the ground? Um, you know, Kyle Crowfoot, our holder, doesn't like to think, doesn't like to think it's that easy, but uh, that's basically what it is. Catch the ball, put it on the ground. <laughs> uh, I saw that Latroy Pittman is listed as, uh, you know, first on the depth chart at slot receiver. Um, what have you seen from him? in terms of his development and maturity, both on and off the field last three years? Yeah, he's a talented player. Um, he came in, he was a, an early enrollee guy his freshman year, and he made a lot of plays. Um, don't know if he knew what he was doing at, at the time, but um, he's, he's a talented player. He's very gifted, and I think that uh, he's really got a grip of what we're doing, and he knows that this year is important to him, and he's putting a lot of time and effort to, uh, to make sure he's on the field and contribute. Uh, Tran Harris was named the backup, at least for this game anyway. Uh, surprised at all? And, and why do you think he, was, uh, he edged the other guys? Um, I don't know about surprised. I think there is a lot of talent behind me at quarterback. Um, I think Treon gives us a little bit more as far as maybe short yardage packages or, or coming in and, and wildcat uh, kind of deals. But, um, I mean, they're, they're going to keep competing. They're going to keep battling. And uh, I've told all the, all the other guys that, this isn't a permanent thing. Um, like you said, it's week to week. And just stay involved and, and keep getting better and don't hang your head. And by all accounts, last year wasn't a very good year for the offensive line. I think the lasting memory is probably Jonathan Harrison blocking Quentin Dunbar on a play. But how different is that offensive line this year and how much more confidence do you have in them? Um, yeah, I think we were, we were beat up at times last year. Guys were asked to either go outside to inside or inside to outside, which is tough. Um, but at the same time, you got to have depth and you – you got to be able to uh, to rely on more than five guys, so I, th I think we have started to build some depth, and I think our uh, our offensive line works well together, and we have a lot of talent at the position. You seem to be getting rid of the ball a lot quicker this year. Is that going to help them, maybe? Yeah, it'll definitely help them. Um, 
people like to think of sacks as a as an offensive line stat, but it's it's a total team stat. Um, the average fan doesn't realize that the running back has to pick up blocks, and the quarterback doesn't have all day back there. So I think that uh, we've really worked together, and we understand our protections very well. And when you know what you're doing, you can play fast. Jeff, <clears throat> I'll ask you the same question I asked Coach Muschamp uh, this morning. How much of the confidence that you guys have is, would you say, is the new scheme, and how much is it uh, the presence that Kurt Roper has brought? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think we have the players to, to really flourish in the system that we're running. Um, we have uh, a lot of players that can make plays in space. Um, but Kurt, or Coach Roper is always, uh, always up-tempo. He's always, he's always a positive guy, and we, and we needed that around here. Um, He's not going to be one to, to have an off day on the, on the field. He's always going to uh, be bringing the energy, and that's what, that's what we need in a coach. So I think it comes from, comes from both. Also, how big of a difference do you feel there is in the confidence from last year to this year or just previous years? Um, I mean, I think it come, our confidence comes from making a lot of plays. Um, during the spring, we had a lot of big plays, and that carried over to the summer. Um, during camp, I think we had a really great, great camp. Uh, we protected the ball and made big plays. So when, when you can put those two things together, you know, you're going you're gonna to be looking at a pretty good offense. But you feel a lot more confident than you did in you know, last year or the year before heading into the season? I mean, I, was, I think we were confident as a team going into last year. Uh, I think we're more talented this year. Uh, I think we know what we're doing a little bit more this year. But, um, I mean, what, the more time you put in, the more time you spend together, the more confident you're going to be. Jeff, your first game freshman year, um, you came in through a pick on your uh, first attempt. Oh, yeah. Came back out. John went back in. You did end up finishing the game, but what did John kind of teach you during that, and how can you use that with Tryon? Yeah, things are going to happen out there. Um, you're not always going to make the right read or make, make the perfect throw, but it's a long season and a long game. You've got to be able to, to put that in the past and move on. Coach's, uh, coach's mindset this year is play the next play, and and that's what you're going to have to do. But uh, I hope, I hope uh, the younger quarterbacks don't throw picks on their first play. <laughs> All right, Jeff, can you talk a little bit about how Max Garcia has been developing at center? I know back in the spring he had a little trouble snapping the ball. How's he been doing with it now as we're approaching the season opener? Yeah, snaps are a non-issue for him. Um, he put in a lot of time during the summer on his own. Um, and having a good snap is kind of an underrated thing in, a, in our offense. Um, if the snap's off, it throws off the timing, and he understands that. So he did put in the work as far as snapping the ball and as far as uh, getting the offensive line on the same page. He's, he's uh, second to none. This is kind of an off-the-wall question. I don't want to look back, but <clears throat> what, was that, what was it like growing up in Japan? Yeah, I mean, that was, it was different. Uh, I lived on a Navy base, so it was kind of everything was right there for you. Um, I think I was too young to really appreciate it, but uh, looking back on it, it was a nice experience. But um, I'm happy to be in the, in the U.S. Did, it, did it, it, like, give you any values? I mean, did you pick up anything? I mean, you played sports over there. Yeah, um, I played with an all-Japanese team, so there was a language barrier. Um, I got to meet new people, uh, learn how different, different cultures do things differently. Um, they were very uh, disciplined people, and that was kind of a, that was kind of a shock. So, um, but like I said, I think I was too young to really to really appreciate it. But um, it was a good experience. You've got guys like C.J. Wharton making a push for playing time, showed up on the depth chart. Just mm -hmm. what has he done uh, recently that has impressed you? He's talented. Uh, he can he can uh, get open. Um, mm -hmm. He can catch the ball, and and he can uh, make plays after the catch. So he's just a guy that. Um, that we're going to want to get him the ball this year and see what he can do because he really is a talented player and uh, he's a guy that's just going to have to keep learning what he's doing. That's going to be the only thing that holds him back. So uh, we're going to keep pushing him along. He's, he's a young guy and that's, that's what young guys do. They make mistakes, but uh, he's very talented. Jeff, um, you guys are going to be playing at night, which is 
a little different from practicing in the heat so much. I mean, are you, you know, how do you feel about welcoming that rather than playing in such, you know, humid conditions? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's out of our control, but um, I don't think our, our offensive linemen are too bummed about that. You know, it'll take a little load off them, but, but playing in Florida, um, the heat is our edge. A couple years ago, we played LSU, and, and they were cramping up and, and, uh, and things like that. So I think playing in the heat is our edge, but I don't think that, uh, I don't think that we're too bummed about it. Jeff, when you look at Idaho's defense, what do you see? Um, it's it's kind of hard to tell for game one. Um, things always change from year to year. Um, they play a lot of, lot of quarters coverage. Um, I think the strength of their team is, is their defensive ends. They play with, uh, with great motors, and uh, they appear on film to be good players. So it's hard to really tell what you're going into, but uh, I think we have a good game plan uh, in store. Last time you got on the field, Obviously, not not really a great experience. What do you think you're going to feel coming out of that tunnel for the first time in such a long time? What kind of emotions do you expect, and how do you think you'll be able to handle that? You know, night game, first time back in a while. I think that I'll handle it the same as all the other players. We're excited to get back on the field and play in front of our fans, um, and and we're excited to play together. So anytime you can play another team rather than yourself, it's it's always a good experience. But uh, there's nothing really like game one. It's it's. It's a really good feeling coming out of the tunnel. All right, thanks, guys.